We could see him tonight as Brown got called for that foul, but we have not seen him yet. Yeah, and I'd be surprised if he does get in the game. You know, hadn't played for practice for four or five weeks, so really kind of out of shape from that aspect. And uh, unless it just comes down to the wire game, you need one of your experienced players. What he really brings to this team is his competitive spirit. He battles on every play. So I would say they may just take this night off, give him some time to get into rotation. This uh, pre-conference schedule for ETSU is brutal. I mean, they go on the road. They have two home games before Christmas. Before Christmas. And I, uh, when we were sitting here today, we asked Murray Bartow who made that schedule. It was he. You play some of those guarantee games. You do what you can at that level as Jones misses both free throws. And you know, a nice ball fake by Tubbs. And he made a good point in the fact that when you have some success at the mid-major level, the bigger schools don't want to come to your place and play. So if you're going to play those teams, you almost have to go to their place. Ideally, you'd like to maybe get some neutral courts if they won't come to your place. Miller. Kentucky 8 of 12 from outside the three-point line. The other aspect why you would schedule like that is the fact that he does have a lot of upperclassmen. They're experienced, so if they lose some games early in the season, it's not going to completely destroy their confidence like it would maybe a team full of freshmen and sophomores. That is, unless they lose every game. Smith missed that layup. Lamb. And Miller with the offensive rebound. Good play by the Kentucky guards tonight, I think, Kyle, in terms of going to the offensive glass. Yeah, and I think not only offensively, but defensively, all five guys need to rebound. You see ETSU, that when they put a shot up, they just start backpedaling. They're really not attacking the offensive glass at all. That's why Kentucky has not given up many offensive boards. Nice ball fake by Liggins. And it wasn't over and back. Nice call by Doug Schaus as Sheldon Cooley got a hand on it just before it went in the backcourt, so no violation. But should the shot clock have been reset is my question. Yes. If the other team touched it, it had to be reset. Had to have control, didn't it? Vargas fouled on the rebound. Shot went off the rim that time, so that's an answer we will never know. Brandon Knight checks back in for Kentucky. Eloy Vargas heads to the bench. Number 44, J.C. Ward, the sophomore out of Marietta, Georgia. Here you see him back into the ETSU lineup. Uh, just a real banger down low. Takes up space and not afraid to knock people around. Likes the contact. One thing uh, by not having Cannon in the lineup and now having Harrelson with two fouls and the players, you notice a lot more in and out substitutions, trying to keep everybody fresh. It puts a little more emphasis on the coaches, making sure everybody stays fresh out in the court. How about that up and under move from DeAndre Liggins as Kentucky has now matched its biggest lead at a dozen. Williams on the baseline, and again, the Cats foul a jump shooter. This time it was Knight. ETSU goes to the line, but the Buccaneers staring up at a double-digit deficit. Fans, don't forget that later in tonight's broadcast, we'll have our Kentucky Farm Bureau all-around coverage, defensive play of the game. Dave Baker, Kyle Macy, Rob Bromley here with you. And Kyle, there's a fellow you know awfully well and a fellow who had some great success in this game. Yeah, I really did. Gene Bartow, uh, first off, coming out of high school, recruited me. He was taking the place of John Wooden at UCLA. I uh, didn't go there, but uh, then later in 79, I had a chance to travel. He coached the team over to China and just kind of a stayed in touch over the years. Just a super young man, older now, a little bit of a man, but uh, super guy and his son Murray do an outstanding job for ETSU. And you know, Kyle, uh, sitting in his customary position just over our left shoulder is Joe B. Hall. I don't know if there are any two guys in the history of college basketball that experienced the kind of pressure that 
Gene Bartow and Joe B. Hall can talk about Bartow replacing John Wooden. And of course, Joe B. following Adolph Rupp here at Kentucky. Yeah, I'm sure they would have a lot of notes that they could share. Very similarities, common similarities between the pressure pack situations. Michael Williams, you see his numbers as. Team taking the uh, Memphis Tigers with Larry Finch back at the time to That's the right. final before the uh, UCLA team of Bill Walton knocked them off in the finals. And then later to UCLA, as we said, and on to UAB. Had a, a long, successful run there. Murray followed him there and now at ETSU. The Buccaneers miss both free throws. Kentucky goes to the line as you look at John Calipari. Last time out, of course, Kentucky. They scored 54 first half points in that 171 win over East Tennessee. The Cats made a season high 15 three pointers. And if you remember, as Jones can't connect, it was Eric Bledsoe who had a game high 29. He was 8 of 9 from outside the arc. Kentucky 8 of 14 from outside three point land tonight as Tubbs gets the tough basket underneath the rim. And ETSU staying with this 1-3-1 zone. I'm a little surprised at the way Kentucky's been shooting. You would think they might just match up. And I try to make those big guys try to beat you. Lamb! Because right now the guards are showing they can fill it up. Here's the thing, and you know this, Kyle. As a coach, it just drives you crazy. Kentucky 9 of 15 from outside the three-point line. They're 3 of 7 from the free throw line. As Brown is fouled, and he'll go to the line. This is too close. They need to back up. How do you do that? A lot of it is rhythm, I, I think, on those three-point shots. The ball movement has been very good, so they're kind of getting into the rhythm, stepping into the shot from beyond the three-point line. Part of that as well is good recognition on the part of teammates and nice delivery of passes that they can handle and get into that rhythm. TSU not a lot better, 7 of 12 from the stripe. Now here they go back man to man. So it takes Kentucky uh, again showing a little bit of inexperience here, taking a little bit longer than you would like to, to switch their offense from against that zone to against the man. Miller missed that one. Once again, the Cats hit the offensive boards, and it's John Hood. Hubs with a tough drive. And he'll get called for the offensive foul. Just a great offensive effort to rebound here by John Hood, coming flying in from the weak side and able to get the ball back up and in the basket before Tubbs could try to go for the block. Kind of got his hand caught in the rim, Tubbs did that time, to protect the basketball for John Hood. Kentucky with 21 first-half rebounds. Eight of those are offensive. And with the exception of Terrence Jones, maybe with a couple of those, I'm going to guess that the rest have come from Kentucky's guards. Jones with three offensive rebounds. Darius Miller's got one. Eloy Vargas has got one. Hood's got one. Jones couldn't get that stick back. Harrelson back in there. And now the Cats reset the offense. Yeah, Murray Bartow really searching. They've gone now to a 2-3 zone. And one of the weaknesses against the zone, you don't have man-to-man -man responsibilities to block out and rebound. That time giving up the offensive board. Lamb had it blocked, but Smith is called for the foul. Nice flash there by Deron Lamb attacking the middle of the zone. See, stepping right into that gap. And Smith a little late, gets him across the arm. One tie, two lead changes. East Tennessee State took a 9-8 lead. And since then, Kentucky has never looked back, extending the margin to as many as 15. gets that one to go in the exhibition the freshman out of Queens shooting at about a 70 percent clip for the free throw line Harrelson quickly back out of there before he picks up a third foul as Darius Miller 
Reports back in. Real important now for ETSU. Make sure they get a couple of good possessions here in the last minute 50. You don't want to let this lead go too big going into halftime. Where you see the big advantage for Kentucky 23 to 12 on the boards. Does that Again, surprise you? No, because ETSU, when they shoot, now watch it, as you see, when they take a shot from the perimeter, all five guys just start backpedaling. They're really not going to the glass that much. Smith got a good look and knocked down the short jumper. Smith now has nine. ETSU led by Isaiah Brown with 15. As John Calipari takes a 30-second timeout to set the play. 26 seconds left on the shot clock. 118 to play in the first 20 minutes. Yeah, and you've got some timeouts to use, so a good timeout there to call. Make sure his team gets set offense, but you don't want to.